Hello guys, welcome to the part 2 of this essential modify panel commands in AutoCAD tutorial. In the first tutorial, we discussed quite a number of essential commands that you need when you are required to do modifications in your drawing. So if you haven't checked that tutorial out yet, I would suggest you to give it a go first by clicking the link that you can see on the top right corner. And continuing from that, in this tutorial, we are going to discuss the following commands that you can see on the screen. So to get started, let's discuss the stretch command of modify panel. Well, what the stretch command does is, it stretches objects crossed by a selection window or a polygon. Now to demonstrate this to you guys, I'm going to use this polygon tool in the draw panel and I'm going to create a polygon with six sides. Just like this. And after that, I'm going to go over here to this stretch command and I'm going to click on this button and now you can see that it prompts me to select the object. So the object that I would like to stretch would be this particular object. So I'm going to click somewhere over here and I'm going to drag my mouse pointer like this and I'm going to make sure that my selection is touching only these two sides of the polygon. And after that I can simply go ahead and press enter and now if I specify my base point to be over here you can see that the object gets stretched in this kind of a manner. So basically the two arms that were selected are getting stretched just like this because of the way how I specify my base point. So I can just go ahead and stretch my object just like this. And this is the stretched object. Now I'm going to undo this for a second and I'm going to click on the stretch command again. And this time instead of just selecting these two sides, I'm going to select this side, this side, this side and this side of the polygon. And after that I can hit enter and if I specify the base point to be over here you can see that the object gets stretched now in this kind of a manner. So as I explained to you guys at the beginning what the stretch command does is it's stretching objects crossed by a selection window or a polygon. So the way you draw your selection window through these different parts of the of the polygon will determine how the object is going to get stretched taking into account the base point that you specify. So in this case I can completely deform the object by doing a stretch towards this side and create an object that looks like this. So that's something to keep in mind. And what happens if you select the entire object? Let me undo this and if I select the stretch command again and this time if I select the entire object and hit enter and it doesn't really matter where I specify my base point, you can see what happens is I'm basically moving the entire object without actually stretching uh, any part of the object. So that's something to keep in mind. And now if you try to apply that same concept to this particular drawing, I would like to make an amendment to this, uh, this table that you can see over here. I would like to slightly stretch this table along with the placement of these chairs a bit towards the right side. So we can simply use the stretch command that we learned just now. All I have to do is simply select my objects in this manner. And if I press enter and now if I specify my base point to be over here, you can see that with the help of the polar tracking which uh, kicks in just like this, I can move and extend my table just like so towards the right side. And let's say if I want to place it uh, somewhere over here, all I have to do is simply click and that will get stretched just like that. Alright, now let's talk about the lengthen command. So I have a line object over here. and to access the lengthen command, you have to click on this flyout menu of the modify panel and you can access it right from here. And as you can see, it changes the length of objects and the included angle of arcs. So as soon as you click on the command, right over here in the bottom, you can see that we get four options. We have delta, percent, total or dynamic. Let's say if I were to go with dynamic over here, you can either select it from here directly or you can even right click and select dynamic and after that if I select my object you can see that the length of my line changes dynamically as I move my cursor to the right side as well as to the left side just like this. So that's what's pretty much uh, meant by doing a dynamic lengthening of your, of your object. So let's say if I wanted to stop over here you can see that the length of my line increased accordingly. I'm going to undo this and this time, instead of selecting dynamic, 
let's say if I go with uh, percent and now you can see that it's asking me to enter a percentage of the length. Now let's say I if I would like to have my object to be twice the size of what I have right now, what I can do is I can simply enter 200% and after that if I click on this line, you can see that it's getting extended by an amount that's twice of its original size. The tool doesn't stop there. If I click on the newly created uh, object, you can see that now it's getting extended twice the size again, isn't it? So as long as we keep on doing it, it'll actually go on continuously. So once you're done with the tool, you can simply hit enter to conclude. And that's another way of using this uh, lengthen command. Let's explore the other options as well. If I go over here to this modify panel and if I take the lengthen command and now let's see what happens if you were to go with the delta. Right click and select delta and in this case you can specify how much of an additional distance you would like to add in order to uh, extend or in order to lengthen your existing line object. Let's say I would like to add 1 million units and now if I select the object you can see that it's getting extended. And as long as we stay on the right side of the midpoint, it's getting extended towards the right side. But if we happen to cross the midpoint and go to the towards the left side, you can see that the extension happens or the lengthening happens in this case to the to the left side. And after that, you can just click to conclude the process. So I guess you guys got the basic idea how to use this uh, lengthen command. So I'm going to simply hit enter to finish my drawing. All right. Now let's go ahead and talk about the break command. Alright, so to demonstrate the capabilities of break command, I'm going to use these two objects that you can see over here. And you can access the break command simply by clicking on this flyout menu of the modify panel. And right over here, you can see the break command and what it does is it breaks the selected object between two points. Alright, so once we have the tool, what we have to do is we have to select the object that we need to break. So I'm going to get started by, let's say, selecting this corner of this particular rectangle. And as soon as I do that, you can see that now it's asking me to specify the second breakpoint. So if I were to, let's say, specify the second breakpoint to be over here, you can see that the white highlighted part of the object remained and the rest simply disappeared. Now, let's say if I were to take the break command again and Let's say this time I happen to select the object somewhere over here from the middle, but I would like to get rid of maybe this entire side of this object. You can see that the way I selected the object doesn't really let me remove this particular side of the polygon altogether at one time. So in such a case, what I can do is I can simply right click over here and specify the first point. And then I will give my first point to be over here and then you can see that as I move my mouse point along this line, you can basically get an idea of what's going to remain and what's going to get removed. As I move my mouse cursor along this line, you can see that that particular line is going to disappear as soon as I select this point and the rest of the object is going to remain just like this. And it's that simple. All right, so let's move on to the next command that we are going to discuss and that's the join command. So what the join command does is it's joining similar objects to create one single unbroken object. Now I can demonstrate that to you guys in this manner. Let's say if I have two different line objects. My first line object is like this. And I'm going to take the line command again. And my second line object is like this. And you can see that even though the lines happen to be perfectly continuous from one to another, just because we happen to activate object snap when we combine the lines together, you can see that these two still remain as two different objects. When I select this object, it's only that object that gets selected, not the other part. So if you want to combine this object into one single object, we can simply use the join command to do that. And the join command is located right over here. And I'm going to select that. And after that, I'm going to specify all the objects that I need to join together. Now, for example, in this case, I can select both the objects like this. And now if I hit enter, and now if I select, you can see that these two lines are now joined together and it acts as one single polyline. And in a similar manner, if I happen to draw a rectangle like this using the line command, 
you can see that my first line will be over here the second line will be over here the third line I'm going to touch this point and make use of the polar tracking in order to draw the third and the fourth lines just like this and now if I try to select the object you can see that it's made out of separate lines isn't it so if we want to convert this into one single object what I can do is I can simply take the join command select my entire object and press enter and now you can see that it acts as one single object after we perform the join operation alright that's about it for join command and now let's move on and talk about the fillet command alright so what the fillet command does is whenever we have sharp edges like these four corners that you can see of this rectangle we can quite simply smoothen out the edges by giving it a shave in a way such that the sharp corners that you see right here will get converted into smooth rounded edges and we can do that by specifying a radius manually so to get started I'm going to head over to this fillet command over here click once and right over here at the bottom you can see that we can specify our radius so what I'm going to do is you can either select radius from here or you can simply right click over here and click on radius and I'm going to specify the radius of the curve that I would like to have for the rounded edge that I'm going to create so let's say in this case I'm going to have the radius to be 15,000 units and after that all you have to do is just select the two intersecting uh, lines which forms this corner with a 90 degree angle so I'm going to select my first object and the second line just like this and as soon as I select the objects you can see that it automatically shaved off the sharp corner and created this beautifully smoothened out curved corner isn't it now if you would like to check do a quick check of the radius of this what I'm going to do is I'm going to take line and I'm going to pick this end point and I will draw a line all the way to the center as you can further verify using the polar tracking just like this and you can see that the distance is 15,000 units just like what we specified now you can see that we managed to smoothen out just one corner but how about the other corners and what if we want to do the same thing for the other corners as well there's a quick and easy way to smoothen out all the corners of your rectangle all together so I'm going to undo this until I get the rectangle back and I'm going to pick the command again and specify the radius which is 15,000 units and without selecting the object I'm going to right click again and this time I'm going to select multiple and after that if I go ahead and select these two lines you can see that it worked for this particular corner but uh, as you can see it didn't really end the process we can see we can keep on selecting the objects like this until we get all the sharp edges smoothened out in this manner using this fillet command and after you're done you can simply hit enter to end the process well if you still think that having to do all the four corners manually in this particular case was a bit too tedious there's another quick and an easy way to sort of fill it out all the corners just in one go so I'm going to undo this and I'm going to go ahead and take the fillet command again specify the radius to be 15,000 and now instead of selecting multiple I'm going to go ahead and select polyline and after doing that when I hover my mouse over here to the 2D polyline you can see that the fillet command gets applied to all the four corners instantly so that's a very quick and an easy way to fillet out the sharp corners without having to do them one by one alright now let's talk about the chamfer command now the chamfer command also works in a similar manner but if you were to use the chamfer command as opposed to creating a rounded corner just like what the fillet command did when we use the chamfer command it will create a beveled corner and if you look at this particular corner for example it's basically going to connect a point from here to a point here through a line segment and it's going to get rid of this sharp corner so we'll see how that works so we can simply go ahead and click on this flyout menu and take the chamfer command and if you look down here we can specify the distance so I can either click over here or maybe I can right click somewhere over here and select distance and now I'm going to specify the chamfer distance 
and for this I'm going to use the same distance 15,000 units and over here you can see that we have to specify a second chamfer distance as well and just to show you guys the difference I'm going to add maybe 25,000 units for the second chamfer distance so that we'll be able to see where it gets applied so I will select my first line and then I'll select my second line and before I click to end the process you can see that the shorter distance is this and the longer distance is this which basically corresponds to 15,000 and 25,000 respectively so you can basically get an idea how it applied those distances that I gave first to this part of the line and the second distance to this part of the line so just to conclude the process I can simply click on this line and that will sort of uh, shave off a part from that corner just like this and similar to what we did when we were using the fillet command if you want to replicate this process for the other corners as well what you can simply do is well let me go ahead and undo this we can pick the command and specify the distance again 15,000 and 25,000 and after that without clicking on the object I'm going to right click and select multiple and I'm going to pick my first object to be this line and the second object to be this line and just keep in mind that if you would like to have this kind of an arrangement over here to this corner as well you have to make sure that you select this line to be the first line and this line to be the second line so that the shorter distance will get applied to this particular line and the longer distance will get applied to this particular line so let's see what I mean by that first I'm going to select this and then I'm going to select this so that now you can see that both the corners actually look even similarly I can select this line and this line and after that I'm going to select this line and this line and now we can hit enter to end the process alright now let's talk about the final command that we're going to discuss today and that's the align command of AutoCAD so what the align command does is it can quite easily align an object with another object based on our specification now to demonstrate this to you guys I'm going to use this very simple flow plan that I have right over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this longer side of the table against this wall that you can see over here so if I were to do that completely manually what I would have to do is first I have to rotate the object by 90 degrees and then I will have to move the object in a way that it would properly get aligned with this wall right over here but we don't really have to go through any of that trouble as long as we can use this align command which is located in this modify panel and it's located right over here so I'm going to pick the command and after that I'm going to select my entire object just like this and now since we want this object to get rotated I'm going to pick my first point to be this point right over here and once the table is rotated I would like that point to touch let's say this point of the wall and now you can see that it prompts me to select the second point so I'm going to pick my second point to be let's say this point right over here and in a similar fashion I would like this point of this chair to touch this wall as well and as you can imagine I don't really know the distance between these two points to exactly pick the correct point but you don't really have to worry about that just pick a point somewhere over here and after that I'm going to hit enter and then it will ask me whether I want to scale the object based on the alignment points or not well since I don't really want to make any changes to the scale of this object I'm going to say no in case if you select yes the object will be scaled up or down depending on the two points that you actually selected when you were executing the command so in this case I'm just going to go ahead and say no and now you can see that the object got aligned perfectly along with this line I'm going to disregard the fact that this chair is actually crossing one of these walls over here but you guys get the basic idea so we managed to rotate the object and align it perfectly along this line just in one go so that's how the align command works alright guys that brings us to the end of this tutorial so I hope you guys did follow both parts 1 and 2 of this essential modify panel commands in AutoCAD tutorial and altogether we discussed quite a number of tools that can be extremely helpful when you're working with AutoCAD and when you're trying to make modifications to your drawing especially as a beginner so if you did like the content 
show your support by hitting that like button and if you do have any questions don't forget to add a comment down below and if you would like to stay tuned for this kind of interesting tutorials don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so that you will get notified as soon as we publish a new video on this channel so thanks a lot for watching guys i'll see you again in another tutorial